If you're watching this video, congratulations, because you probably suck at Sky Battle. Now at the time at which I'm recording this video, Sky Battle can currently be only played in teams of 4, so if you have nobody else to play this game with, such as yours truly, you're going to need to utilize the items that the game throws at you in order to have a chance at winning. At the beginning of the match, everybody starts off on their spawn island with a stone sword, a bow and two arrows, 8 pieces of steak, an unlimited amount of blocks corresponding to your team's color, and an efficiency 3 iron pickaxe. But scattered around the map you can find 4 types of chests. Common and rare chests can be found more often throughout the map, while epic chests are much more scarce, and only one legendary chest can be found per game, which is always located in the middle of the map. Common chests can contain cobwebs, creeper eggs, iron swords, diamond swords, TNT, levitation sparks, and orbs of harming, while rare chests can contain some of the items mentioned before, along with healing sparks, golden apples, scaffolding, and armor pieces such as iron boots, iron leggings, diamond boots, diamond leggings, and either blast protection for iron leggings or iron chest plate. Epic chests contain enough items to supply your whole team. Or just one person is greedy. They can give any armor piece as long as it isn't the blast protection iron boots and leggings, which can be only be found in rare chests, and diamond chest plates, which can only be found in the legendary chest that middle. Epic chests can contain iron and diamond swords, but they can also give knockback one stone swords, or stone and iron axes. You'll also be able to find either power one bows or punch one bows. Power bows deal way more damage, while punch bows deal significantly much more knockback. You can also find splash potions of harming and fishing rods as well. Use the harming potions to get some chip damage on your enemy, or to finish them off. As for fishing rods, I'll give a brief rundown on ways to utilize them later on in the video. Diamond chest plates can only be found in the legendary chest up middle. The legendary chest can contain up to two diamond chest plates, and can also come with a pair of diamond leggings as well. On paper, the diamond chest plate significantly increases the amount of damage you can take, but I always see people getting targeted for wearing it since people either see you as the biggest threat, or they just want the armor for themselves. So just be prepared for your opponents to travel across the Pacific Ocean in order to kill you. Besides the diamond gear, legendary chests can contain ender pearls, lava buckets, creeper eggs, orbs of harming, flying sparks, cobwebs, and a quick charge 2 crossbow along with a few arrows. If you suck at aiming, like me, you're going to want to use swords as you'll be able to deal quick, consistent amounts of damage. However, if you're confident in your aim, go with an axe, since axe crits hit like a freight train. Just keep in mind that axes won't be able to break through cobwebs as quick as swords, so I always keep a sword in my hotbar if I ever get trapped in one. Now some of you may be wondering what levitation sparks and orbs of harming are and think that I'm speaking in braille or something, but I'm just going to give a brief description and ways to utilize some of the items that I mentioned earlier on in the video. Levitation sparks, also known as levies, give you levitation 4 for 2 seconds and allows you to survive being knocked into the void by other players or if you just mess up one of your jumps. If you don't have a clutch item like a cobweb or water bucket, you can use your levy and spam blocks below you to build yourself a little platform so that you don't take any fall damage. Healing sparks are basically what the name implies. Use these whenever you're low and they'll give you regeneration 4 for 2 seconds. Use them if you're losing a fight and need the extra HP to either win the fight or run away safely. Orbs of Harming are throwable items that explode in a 360 radius after they make contact with either a player or a block. They can deal up to 3 hearts of damage depending on how far you are from the explosion, and they can deal damage through walls. Just note to yourself that you can get damaged by your own orb as well, and that it doesn't stick to anything and can bounce off. A nice thing to know is that you can use it like a snowball as well, and knock people off of platforms. Now I think that covers about everything. Does anybody in the class have any questions? <laughs> Sky Battle is a serious game played by adults, and I just wanted to take the time to explain some side effects that could occur which could affect your mental state. 
I've prepared a little graph which accurately describes the average person's experience when playing the game. As you see here, the more time you spend playing this game, the more your will to live goes down. With that being said, that wraps up our mental health segment. So there are currently 4 maps in the game, and I'm going to start off first with Candyland. When you spawn in this map, you can either go left or right. Left has 3 chests which can give you some really nice stuff, and if you go to the right, you can go straight up a water elevator and then open up an epic chest instead. I personally like going to the left since you can get those 3 chests, and they usually give you some really nice stuff. And along the way to that water elevator, I usually don't encounter many enemies. Besides the high risk for blood sugar problems, something that stands out about this map are the water elevators. And you should keep in mind that you can go down the elevator by going up against the wall and looking down while holding shift. This could be useful for juking out any opponents. In the clip that's currently playing right now, I go into the water elevator, but I immediately look down so that I don't go all the way up. My opponent didn't expect that, and I didn't end up getting killed by them. I instead got killed by a different guy literally like 2 seconds later, but I mean, at least I juked that first guy, so it's all okay. Also, to prevent any opponents from sending up explosives, I like to block off the water elevator as soon as I can. The first water elevator you go up, there's going to be a common chest on top, while the second water elevator has a rare chest on top. You can also make a lava bucket trap with the water elevators like in the clip being shown, and get yourself a water bucket while you're at it so that you can do water bucket clutches. I like to try my best to avoid going up water elevators whenever I see people with lava buckets, since it can be really hard to tell whether or not there's lava. I mean, I guess you could also try and listen closely to see if you hear any actual lava, but I would just avoid it altogether in my opinion. Anyways, at the beginning you can just bridge to one of these small platforms, and then you can just place a few blocks and then just jump. Once you climb up this ladder, you'll find an epic chest along with two common chests. And looking down, you can see that your next epic chest isn't too far away, so I would definitely go for it whenever enemies aren't around you. Also, below the first epic chest platform, you can find this rare chest right here. Anyways, like I was saying, try and look everywhere for enemies before you go for this epic chest, since right here, I didn't do that, and an opponent is building up to try and get the jump on me. It can be really annoying to deal with them, since your opponent has good positioning on you, and can smack you into the void anytime they want. And unless you have a lot of ranged weapons and levies, it can be really hard to deal with. After I loot that epic chest, I'll build up onto the platform and then go up this pillar right here to loot this rare chest. From there on, I like to build up directly to middle since having controller middle is really good on this map, since people either have to build bridges to you or they have to take already existing bridges up to you, and you can try and use that to your advantage by knocking them into the void with your good positioning. I think the most important thing to know about this map is that the border doesn't come down from above you, so you can skybase if you really feel like it. I personally don't recommend doing this since it just brings all the attention to you, and people seem to always have levies to go up and after you. Also, if you don't really have any ranged weapons, there really isn't much that you can do other than just constantly bonk your head on the border and give yourself concussions. When you spawn, there's common chests surrounding you, and the one right next to you. But then if you go down, there's another common chest here as well. On this map, I almost always see enemy teams try and shoot people off when they start bridging, so just make sure to keep an eye out for that. And another common thing in this map is that teammates like to jump in front of you while you're bridging, so sometimes you'll just end up falling off. So, you know, just try to keep that in mind and try to not do that to your own teammates. Other than that, I don't feel like there's too much to say about this map. You know, there really aren't any chests that are hidden, but... I guess one last thing that I'd recommend is to try and stay on top of the houses, since it allows you to scope out everything around you. You'll know if enemies are coming or not, and being inside the houses isn't always the most ideal scenario, since it can get kind of cramped and it makes it a lot more difficult to run away if you're getting overwhelmed by a bunch of enemies. Of course, if you have any suggestions that you feel like I missed, make sure to leave it in the comments for others to see. So for grasslands, there are two paths which you can take at the start. The one on the left, you jump down to another small island, and it has one epic chest and four common chests. While on the right, you go to another island, which is about the same elevation as your spawn island. I personally never take the left option since I feel like the positioning sucks, and getting to middle can be really awkward since you have to take a path where people can easily knock you off. In my opinion, 
I'd say to just go with the path on the right, since I just feel like it's the better option out of the two. What I do here, I just jump down, I grab the rare chest on our side, and then I just start building up a little bit, and then I grab what I need to get from the epic chest right there. After that, I go to this spot, and then I grab these two common chests, and then since nobody from the enemy team came to this island, I just grab their rare chest from their side. After that, I make my way on over here, I make a little bit of a staircase, and then I grab these two common chests right here. After grabbing those two common chests, I dig down on this spot right here, and then I grab this rare chest. There's also this really annoying strat that you can do to people on this map, and it's to either place blocks on top of hay bales, or to just straight up destroy them with TNT. Hay bales reduce the amount of fall damage you take by 80%, so by destroying them you can shatter your opponent's kneecaps if they don't have cobwebs or scaffolding. There's a lot of fighting that goes on in the lower part of the map, so just try and stick with your team, or just stay on higher ground if you want to avoid that sort of thing. But other than that, I don't feel like there's too much else to say about this map. Of course if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section so that other people can see them. I just realized that I haven't really given you guys any good reasons as to why you should listen to me, so I guess I should just take you guys through my portfolio, so here we go. Uh, reason 1. I'm a well-respected publisher. Okay, very nice profile picture. Very mature. A lot of subscribers as well. Mm -hmm. An overwhelming amount of comments supporting me. Yep, I'm just getting smothered in praise. I'm pretty famous as well, you know. There's a lot of articles and pictures of me all over the internet. Reason 2. I'm an expert in my field. If you want to raise people's blood pressure, here are some things you can do. If you're by yourself, you can just take all the loot in an epic chest to prevent enemy teams from getting the stuff. Like in this clip, I didn't want anybody on Lime team to get the knockback sword, so I just take it from the chest and then I just throw it away later to ensure that they're weaker. I mentioned fishing rods earlier on in the video, so here's how I use them. I hook an opponent, but I don't reel them in, and if you're asking why I do that, here's why. Fishing rod that you see which is blocking a large portion of my screen right now is basically what the opponent sees unless they're crouching, and it's not very ideal to fight someone while you're crouching so it can get really annoying for your opponents to fight you since they just can't see a majority of their screen so their aim is going to be really messed up. Fishing rods are nice since they let you keep track of where your opponents are, and in this clip I knock this person into the void, and then they try escaping with levees, and they're just about to reach safety until I just reel them back into the void. The last thing is doing creeper or TNT cobweb. It's when you trap your opponent in a cobweb and place explosives on top of them. TNT takes some time to explode, but it can one-shot your opponent, while creepers only deal a little bit of chip damage. Try and use cobwebs against opponents who go for crits a lot, since it'll take longer for them to break out the cobwebs. And with that being said, I think that about wraps up the video. If you guys have any suggestions or things I might have missed, leave them down below in the comment section. If you want to, leave a like on the video. I don't know, maybe subscribe. Yeah, either way, I hope this video helps you guys out in game. And yeah, thanks for watching. Later.